On this edition of Phoenix Pets, we'll take a look at both service and therapy dogs. And what's the difference? You'll meet some special furry friends that are changing lives in the community. And meet an army veteran who uses a service dog to help him with his PTSD. Now, Phoenix Pets. What does it take to become a service or therapy animal? Phoenix TV intern Erica Figueroa explains. That one doesn't fly very well. These dogs look like they're having fun. Come on, secret. But this fun is actually training. Drop. Arizona Dog Sports is a gym, but far from the ordinary. Okay, you're gonna call your dog? Dogs come here to be certified service or therapy animals. There is a difference though. Service animals are trained to do specific tasks for a handler who may have a disability. Therapy animals can improve a person's social, emotional, and cognitive skills. For example, a person may need a therapy animal if they do have anxiety. Raising Hope Dogs has formed a collaboration with Arizona Dog Sports where they have a train the trainer program and I come in and teach the trainers and the trainers get to work my dog. One paw, okay. My dogs get to have an experience in working with different people besides just myself. Good, you're gonna go with Veteran trainer Wendy Faircloth has been training both service and therapy animals for almost 20 years. I just help her with her. time working with animals has led her to her passion. I trained a lot of service dogs in my life, and I think these dogs need to have a wider variety of atmospheres that they go into, environments that they go into. Look at you. Okay. They need to have super stable temperaments because they're working not just with one specific kid and learning one specific kid's mannerisms and how they speak, but they work with a wide variety of kids. According to Wendy, a therapist matches the type of therapy animals based on a patient's need. But in this show, we're specifically focusing on just dogs. Meet some of the furry friends at AZ Dog Sports. Meet Brave. Here's Jeep. Meet Rebel. And their secret. And Henry. And last but not least, Delphi. Service dogs take time to train, but what people don't realize is how much time and energy it takes. Originally a chef, Keith Geisenberger found his second act. His love for dogs and helping others led him to training at Arizona Dog Sports. Henry is Keith's right hand, or shall we say, dog. So what does it take to become a service or therapy dog? Basic obedience and public access skills are just a few steps to become a certified animal. Henry is gonna have a number of jobs. One, he's being trained as a diabetic alert dog. He will be able to smell people's blood sugar and a number of the components to tell if they're in range below 80 or above 180 where it becomes dangerous and he'll be able to alert and give people time to help themselves. He's also gonna spend time as a therapy dog. He's gonna to go to hospitals, he's gonna to go to churches, he's gonna go where people need him, possibly for first responders, PTSD, but he can just be social and he can help people. This bond is like no other. He's my work partner. I bring him to all my clients and I show them what a dog can do and he has a very calming effect on dogs that have trouble settling. So I use him with dogs that are a little bit reactive, which means that they have a reaction above the normal level. And I can look at Henry and he will tell me, based on his body language, how the other dog is communicating. Henry's very good at receiving that and he talks to me. Even a bad day with dogs is better than a good day in the kitchen. For Phoenix TV, I'm Erica Figueroa. Service animals are working animals, not pets. The work or task a dog has been trained to provide must be directly related to the person's disability. Up next on Phoenix Pets, it's story time at the Phoenix Public Library. But it's not what you think. Phoenix TV intern Cassandra Navarro has the next story. Bear made it home just fine. At the library, Miss Marion and Amy are popular visitors. Yay! The program here at the Phoenix Public Library is called Sit, Stay, Read. We come into the library once a week. Right now it's Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. 
And we read with the kids who are here. Amy, down, good girl, stay. The whole point of Sit, Stay, Read is not just the literacy component where we have our certified dog handler reading to the children, but it's also a judgment-free, relaxed environment where the children can relax and read to the dog. All day and night. Sit, Stay, Read has been around for about four years, and we've been lucky enough to have Miss Marion with us for two of those years. So how did Marion get into therapy dog service? I had a tennis partner who would always bring her dog to the court and she would tell me about what she did with the dogs. And I thought that was just a wonderful thing to do, so I started exploring that. I've been a dog handler with certified therapy dogs for about nine years. Amy is my third therapy dog. Amy and Maddie are the two that I have active right now. I have two more in training. Good girl, right? I was taking one of my other dogs to obedience class at PetSmart and they have rescues there. So I would take Hannah and I would say, Hannah, let's go find a lab. And they never had the labs there, but they remembered the conversations. And one night, somebody dropped a black lab off on the doorstep of that rescue. And they called me and they said, we have a black lab. We knew you were looking, are you interested? And so I took Hannah and Shiloh, my other two dogs at the time, down to meet Amy. They got along famously, and the rest, as they say, is history. I know all dogs are special. We have a really great turnout of little ones, and it could be anywhere from an infant all the way up to 10, 12 years old. They feel like they don't have to get all the words right, or that there's so much focus on them because they're actually reading to the dog themselves. Can you tell me what a duck says? Quack, 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 quack. quack, 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 quack. We read with the kids. If they're old enough and they want to, they read to the dog. If they're not old enough or they don't want to, we read to them. And it's just another way to get kids interested in reading and in books in a different way that they might not experience. The dynamic relationship between Amy and the kids involves no judgment, only a safe space for the children to strive. A large part of what I do is I give back to the community in as many ways as I can. I've been very fortunate in my life and I like to be able to give back. So one of the ways that I do that is with the dogs because that also gives me something to do with my dogs. I can bond with my dogs as a team and this gives the dogs a chance to pay back as well. My dogs are mostly rescues and I somehow believe in my heart of hearts that the dogs know that somebody rescued them and that they are paying back too. And I get such a strong sense of satisfaction from that. That it just makes my day. For Phoenix TV, I'm Cassandra Navarro. Therapy dogs date back to World War II when they were used to boost the spirits of recovering soldiers with PTSD. For some, therapy and service animals are a lifeline to help them in their daily lives. This is especially true for this Army veteran. Meet Flagstaff native Mitch Garcia, an Army veteran of 14 years who now lives his life with Abby, his service dog. Turn around. Yes. Good, thank you. I appreciate that. After his daughters advised him to get a service animal, Mitch spent months applying. Then Abby was introduced to him, and the two have been with each other since. I have PTSD, hearing loss, or a hearing aid. It's kind of funny because Abby can tell if I have it on or not. Back issues, so I, I'm a little busted up and broken, but you know, I, mean, I don't let anything hold me back. She helps me through a lot of it. It's not a cure, but it helps. So what she does is she keeps my anxiety down, knowing that she's there, knowing that she has my back, and knowing that I'm okay. Abby is a Belgian Malinois that Mitch received from the Malinois Foundation obedient and smart, making her the ideal dog for the job. However, that's not the case for most of her breed. Only one in 10 Belgian can actually be considered a service dog because of their temperament. So I got extremely lucky when I got Abby. You on belly rubs, huh? Abby was trained through AZ Dog Sports for agility and specialty tasks. There's just a lot of things. She opens doors for me. We're working on more of her picking up my, grabbing my medication. She knows which ones it is. She can open her fridge. She can get a bottle of water. She can throw it in the trash. She'll grab her leash for me. She'll grab her vest for me. So I don't have to bend over and pick it up. She gets on a plane with me. We fly everywhere. We get on the train. And we do Spartan races, obstacle course racing. She'll do the obstacles with me too as well. If I'm having a nightmare or a flashback at night, she'll jump up onto my bed and she'll actually lick me in the face. 
category. Get first because so it's been, you know, I guess a typical veteran or typical male, I guess you would call it. I don't know what you would want to call it, but you know what I mean? Just a, I don't need something else to take care of me. I can take care of myself. I didn't really know the definition of a service dog or a service animal. Thanks to Abby, Mitch now even believes those with any type of needed assistance should acquire a service animal. I strictly believe service dogs, whether you're a veteran or non-veteran, they help everybody so much tremendously. I have a lot of brothers that are missing arms and legs and triple amputees and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Some of them have service dogs. They're amazing for them. And it's helping them deal with life day to day. Just like my kids give me a purpose, she gives me a purpose to live. She's changed my life drastically, you know what I mean? It's, it's, been, it's been quite a change, but it's a positive change. It's a good change. The dogs, they help us move forward to help others and believe that we're okay, that we're not alone. For Phoenix TV, I'm Cassandra Navarro. Before we go, a final word on therapy and service dogs from the Arizona Humane Society. At the Arizona Humane Society, we believe it's very important to rescue pets. Dogs bring so much into our lives. We believe that every pet deserves a good life, and we know that every person can benefit from having a pet in their lives. It adds responsibility, it adds companionship. The bond between especially a dog or a cat and a person can be tremendous. It gives us purpose, and it makes life wonderful. That's all for now, but thanks for watching Phoenix Pets on Phoenix TV. Thank you.